I just sold this Fenton vase on eBay for $260. I'm going to show you how I package this up to be shipped in the mail. Let's get to it. So I've actually done a short video on this before, but I wanted to make a longer version so I can really walk you through this just to make sure that you really know what's going on and that when you're shipping fragile or expensive glassware, you know how to package this stuff. All right, now the first thing I'm gonna do is take some of this medium bubble wrap. I really like to use this for electronics or shipping glassware. If I'm shipping like coffee mugs or something like that, I'll just use a small bubble wrap, but for larger fragile items, I have found that this works really good. I will put a link down below in the comments. So if y'all need any shipping supplies that I use, you can check there. I have one for bubble wrap and a lot of other things. Or you can check www.thriftersifter.co and all my links are on there. So we're gonna go ahead. I'm just gonna wrap this up. Just trying to be careful because of that top piece on there. Don't want to break that. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and do another one, but this time I'm going to do it going the opposite direction. I do get a little bit nervous when shipping expensive stuff like this. I mean, if anything happens, I would technically be out the price that I paid for the item plus the original shipping. So that would not be good. So we wanna make sure we do this right. All right, so want to make sure I'm not filling any of the glass poking out. If so, then I would usually put another wrap around this, but I think that's pretty good right there. So I buy this like foam sheet roll, and it's kind of thin foam, but it's just a little extra added protection. And this is through that same link, and it's under my Amazon supplies that I use. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. All right, the only thing about this stuff, it doesn't hold tape very well. So you kind of have to put a decent sized piece on there, but it, it will kind of come off easily. But it will hold. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do one more the other way. All right. You don't have to use this. You could just use more bubble wrap if you wanted to. This, I think just, it looks nice when it arrives. And the way I'm doing this, if there is any problems, the buyer will see that you took all the measures to make sure that this would arrive safely. Now you can find a lot of packing materials on Facebook for free. Facebook Marketplace. I, lately I've just been so busy, it's been hard for me to keep up with it, to look for some and really and to be able to go pick it up. But whenever I first started, that's how I got a lot of my shipping supplies. And I still go dumpster diving for large boxes because that's pretty easy. I can do that in my own time and go look for that. And sometimes I get lucky and I find bubble wrap and other stuff I can use. All right, now that we have that good and wrapped up, we're gonna go ahead to the next step. All right, so I have these boxes that I ordered. This is a 15 by 12 by 10. I think I have this in my links. I'll have to check. One thing I don't talk about is how I tape my boxes. So that's why I wanna do this long video so we can really talk about this. So this is a three inch packing tape and I got like 40 rolls for really cheap. It hasn't been the best tape out there. It's really hard to find good tape, but this one is actually okay. I mean, it does the job. Once I was really hoping that it was the same color as the boxes when I ordered it. That's what it looked like. It ended up being a lot darker. So next time I'll just order a clear one. Uh, but yeah, I don't have any links for that currently, I don't believe. But I like this because if I didn't use three inch, I would have to use the two inch like two or three times. So if I had to do that, then I'd be using four to six inches worth of tape, 
when I could just use three. But there is another step I'm gonna do that requires a little bit more tape, but I'll show you why I do that. All right, so. Piece like that. So there's a lot of people out there that will just put one piece of tape and call it a day. I like to do an extra step. If this was a smaller box, I would probably just put one piece of clear tape across the other way. But since it's a little bit bigger and a more fragile item, I'm gonna do two. One right here and one right here. Now, if this tape gets loose for any reason, there's gonna be some backup support on there. So that's mainly why I do that. All right, so the next step, we're gonna put a lot of packing paper in the bottom of here. All right, so basically what I'm looking for whenever I'm putting paper in the box like this, and I know people probably think, God, I use a lot of packing paper, but that's the one thing that I found free all the time when I first started. And I don't know, I just really like how it works. It holds really well. Uh, the only thing I'll say is that if you package stuff up in packing paper ahead of time and store it away, it seems like the packing paper will eventually kind of flatten out more and it will move around in the box more. So I wouldn't suggest using this to package stuff ahead of time. But if you did package ahead of time, I would just go back and add a little bit more paper before you ship it out, if it feels like it's moving around too much. All right, basically you just wanna make sure that when you push down, you cannot fill the bottom of the box, because if you can, then most likely this, if it hits something really hard, it could break. But we're gonna do another step here in a minute that's gonna ensure this package just so much better, because we're not gonna ship it in just this box. All right, so I'll go ahead and put this in there. Just wanna make sure that you leave some room so you can put some packing paper on top. All right, so next I'm gonna take packing paper and wrap it all around the outside and on top. I'm also gonna add my little thank you card right here on top so when they open this up, it's right there on top of their package. You know, I took the time to, you know, leave a thank you card. I'm also gonna double box this. I'm putting a lot of care into this package and that's gonna help to result in positive feedback. Really quick, if you're ever shipping a piece of glass in one box, maybe it's a cheaper piece of glass that fits smaller in there, make sure you don't put too much packing paper to where if something gets set a little heavy on it and bulges in or on the side, that it could potentially break it. So just make sure that there is, you know, a little bit of room for this to be squeezed around. You also have to be careful putting stuff on top of this too to when you go box it up and tape it. You don't want too much pressure on top because that could crack the piece of glass if it's really fragile. Careful. That should be perfect. Now really the way I did this tape on the bottom is not necessary for this first box because we're gonna put this aside another box, but since I went ahead and did it already, I'll just go ahead and do it. But usually the outside box is really the one that you mainly want that to be on there. But if anything did happen to the outside box, maybe it's a good idea to have that just in case. Let's see where we're at right now. So I know I had a certain amount I could go on this. So we're at three and a half pounds right now. I think I was estimating like seven pounds when I was done with this. All right, with that box, we're at 5.63 pounds. So that's gonna give me about a pound and seven ounces roughly, maybe a little less, pound and six ounces to get the right shipping charge 
I already looked at the measurements. It looked like I was gonna have to pay an extra dollar for shipping on this box. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. I probably could resize the box and make it a little bit shorter, but I think if I do that, it's not gonna allow the box on the inside to really get the proper protection. So I'm not gonna worry about it today. And like I said, shipping a $260 vase, I really want this to rise safely. So if I have to pay another dollar, I mean, that's just cost of business to me. That's kind of ugly. All right. Probably could have gotten a little more on the side right here. So I have one more piece of this going across. And then I'm going to add three pieces going across this way. All right. I'm going to get one more good one. For safe measures, maybe a couple more. Right All right, I'm doing a couple more. Like I said, it's expensive vase. I want to make sure this arrives safely. We don't want any problems whatsoever. All right, I got some packing paper already tore up. I have set aside. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this up in the bottom really good. That should be good like that. Let's see how this fits. Yeah, pretty good. So we're gonna add some more packing paper around the outside and on top. This box could really be about an inch or two shorter on the side. I just didn't have a box that was that size. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. So that's probably good. Let's see if I can get this thing to close. There's no way something's gonna break inside of here. All right, so this is uh, a little tight here. I'm a little ugly. <laughs> Better one more of the clear one. Target was about seven pounds. I can't make this up. 7.03. My, my target was seven pounds. That is close. With the fragile stickers, I normally put one on each side all the way around, especially with a more expensive item like this. I'll do this. I actually had a comment yesterday. Someone was like, you know, the only problem with your packaging is you're putting fragile stickers on there. I mean, surely you're paying a lot of money for that. I get these for $5.99 free shipping, a roll of 500. But it cost me about a penny per each one. They're actually in my Amazon store through that link. Someone said that they heard, you know, post office employees, they see that and they make it a target. I mean, yeah, maybe if it's a high school kid or something like that, but this is packaged so well, I'm really not worried about this, but it just goes to show the buyer that I put that extra care into the package. I really went out of my way. And if anything happened, they're gonna see I have a fragile sticker all around this thing. And they're going to be like, you know what, I tried, you know, I did the best job that I could. So the final shipping charge on this was right at about $25. They paid $23.36, I believe. So really not too far off. And like I said, if it cost me, you know, an extra dollar or two, you know, for just to make sure that this is going to be shipped safely, it's worth it. And this is called the double box method. I use this whenever I ship. Some really expensive electronics. I've shipped like cash registers like this, TVs, all kinds of stuff. Again, if you need any shipping supplies or anything like that, make sure to check out my website. You can find all my channels on there. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more stuff like this, make sure to follow along. And I'll see you next time. Bye now.